if I can have your attention for just a few minutes. <laughs> One second, Ven, please. So, let me tell you a very terrifying tale of a Celtic creature known as a Knuckleave. Now, a Knuckleave is a very ancient creature back from fire back from when people sat around fires and told tales and it is essentially if you want to think about it in a rudimentary sense a celtic grim reaper it tends to be a horse with a human half kind of fused together on the top that carries a scythe and one of their only known weaknesses is not is that it cannot cross rushing rivers now this was now let me tell you the story of how we learned of such a weakness is Oh, uh, is... I think Jungle's grabbing something real quick just to oh, let yeah, me know oh, yeah, something I, real quick. I think something like the... about like the... Isn't the... was the Headless Horseman sort of like... Fired by that? No way. Kind no, of, I, yeah. I, you, you could almost think of it in that sense. Fresh... Yeah, like, well, the Headless Horseman can't like go past certain, a certain thing. I don't remember. Fresh water. That was it. Fresh water. My bad. Thank you. So many different stories, sometimes I get them a bit confused, but you know what? I, I, I'm always happy to learn new things myself. So, it cannot cross fresh water. Now, if I can That's take your smart. attention for just a few minutes to set the scene, I would like to tell you all the story of how we learned of such a weakness from this creature. So, and I'm gonna wait for Jungle to get back so they can hear us. Welcome. So, many, many years ago, there lived a little family in the Celtic countryside in Ireland, or, <clears throat> excuse me, in Scotland. And they had lived a very peaceful life. There was a man, his wife, and their two sons. Now, they had lived a very simple life. They farmed the land, they hunted in the woods, and they tried to get by day by day. While the cities not too far away hustled and bustled, they enjoyed a very peaceful life, a very quiet life. Now, one of these days, the husband was out tending the field when he noticed something in the field, a body. At first, he thought it was a corpse. And so he went to investigate and rolling over this man that was covered in rags and scratches and bruises, the man coughed, coughing up water. And as he looked at it and tried to see if the man could be saved, the man's eyes opened widely. He screamed and started thrashing about, pulled a knife, and the man quickly backed away. The man that had just woken up from his days looked around wildly, wondering where he was, what had happened. After explaining to the man that he was in the field, his field, the man with the knife slowly put his weapon away, apologized, and told him that the man must be careful, the farmer must be careful, for there is something in the woods, something terrible. Now, the farmer had lived here for, for so long, for many years. His family had been there for generations. He knew the woods like the back of his hand and had no reason to fear anything. Now, he decided that he would humor this drowned man who seemingly came from nowhere and wanted to hear his story. So he brought him in, he poured him some, some water, and he decided, sit down and I will feed you. If you tell me your story, what is it that you find in these woods that is so terrifying that you approach my field and collapse in it? Now the drowned man took a sip of the water, hesitantly looked at it, and then took another sip, took a deep breath, and sighed. And he said that he and his compatriots had been out in the woods, hunters, that were just looking for some game, they'd been tracking it for many days. When they had stumbled upon very old land, very untouched soil, trees that had seen thousands of years before them, and near the center was a clearing, a clearing with mushrooms growing all around in a circle. Now at first, they thought the old legends were just that, old legends, a fairy circle, nothing to worry about, something, not, something they not need worry about. And they decided to go deeper into the woods to hunt. And as they went in, that's when things started to get difficult. At first, it came in the form of one of their compatriots catching a cold. At first, they thought it was just a mere sickness, but it grew worse and worse. And then one day, their compatriot simply did not wake up. Then there were four of them left. 
they decided they still must find this game and they must bring it back. Very fat deer, worth everything. So they went deeper into the woods. They found some rabbits, and they, f they hunted that as well. It was decent eating, but it was not the prize they were looking for. So they went deeper and deeper, until one night, while they slept, three men woke up and noticed that the fourth was not with them. They looked around, tried searching, wondering just where this man had gone. And as they went deeper into the woods, they found him 30 minutes away to the west. His corpse strung up in a tree, impaled through one of the great branches. Now he had no way to get that high. He was nearly 20 feet in the air. It looked as though he had been lifted and thrown against the branch. They were terrified and thought to themselves, this is not a place for men. We must leave. So they decided to walk back. They began moving and moving, and as night descended upon them, they realized something. As they stepped into a clearing and looked around, they saw old embers, burnt wood, and they noticed that it was their campsite from the night before. They had walked in circles. Confused because they were sure they had gone one direction and one direction only, the men began to panic and decided that perhaps it was hunger that had gotten to them. So they decided to cook what rabbits they had, and then in the morning when they could see again, they would track their way back, making sure to make markings on the tree so they would not get lost. Nothing happened that night, except for howls in the distance of wolves. Wolves, monstrous beasts, for the howls gurgled and cracked as if many howled at once as one entity, not all together, but all at once. Now, the men were terrified, but as the sun rose, all three of them were still alive, and they began to march west once more, carving into the trees little marks so they wouldn't get lost, they wouldn't get turned around. And after many, many hours of walking, they came upon a tree with a cut in it. They thought this could not be ours, this must be somebody else's. So they marked the tree again, and they kept walking. And when evening came upon them, they kept walking. They could not spend another night in these woods. And as they walked all through the evening, when the sun slowly began to rise, they found a tree with two marks. The men began to panic. Something was disturbing these woods, was keeping them trapped. They continued until finally they could not walk anymore, and so they sat down for the night, taking watches one by one, and falling asleep when they could. The next morning rolled around, and there were only two men left. One of them, who had been on watch that night, had fallen asleep, the last one. And as these two woke up, they found their friend gone. Instead of going west, they decided to head south. They headed south for nearly an hour before the same thing, they saw one of their men high up in a tree, impaled with a great branch, his head missing as if it had been cut clean through. The men were terrified. They thought that perhaps the Lord Almighty had abandoned them, that their sins had catched up with them, for some creature hunted them. No man could do such a thing, and so they grew scared. They began to move south once more, running as fast as their legs could take them. Night descended once more, and so they crowded around a great tree, and they waited, fearing to go to bed. They stayed awake through the whole thing, until one of them, the survivor of our story, saw in the distance great yellow orbs watching them from the tree line. Tall as a tree itself, as if the height of a house. Two eyes, and then another set just below it flared up bright red. The light was so great that they saw skin ripped away and just muscle of a great creature on all fours watching them. The men panicked, and they kept an eye on it all night until the sun slowly rose, and they saw it was nothing there. They don't know what it could have been, but the orbs were gone. They panicked and began to run once more south until they came across that big tree once again. The men ran and ran and ran until the sun set once more and they still ran, their hearts beating, sweat dripping from their face and their legs so tired they screamed for them to no longer run, but they would not for they were terrified. Driven by pure adrenaline, they continued on until finally 
They stopped for a brief moment. They looked back, and they saw a great creature. A horse as big as a house, with a shambling man on top of it, slowly lolling about and holding a great scythe. It looked at them, its jaw unhinged, and it screeched loudly like the devil. The men screamed, panic and ran, and the survivor of our story told how he got away, just in time. They ran, changing from south to head east. They ran and ran until their legs grew so tired that the creature stayed right on their heels, until the man finally... They saw a river just ahead. Now, the man hoped that perhaps this river would carry them to safety, but the creature was gaining. So he looked back at his friend. His friend looked at him and asked, what are they going to do? And the man pulled his dagger, stabbed his friend as quickly as he could, backed away, and began to run. And began to run. He heard screaming. He heard cackling and the neighing of a great beast. Its growls so terrible. Where did jungle go? We paused the story. Come quickly so I can finish. We paused the story just for you so we could finish when you were here. So, again, continuing off where I was. So the man stabbed his friend and began to run to the river. And he heard the neighing of great beasts growling, gnashing, his friend screaming for help, cackling from the man above, and the sound of flesh ripping apart. He looked back just in time to see the scythe had cut through his friend. And the great creature held up the man, laughed, and slammed him against the great branch of a tree as if to make him a sacrifice. Where did Kay go? Oh, there you are. Good. I thought we lost you too. Slammed him against the tree. The man dove into the river, the freezing waters colding him to the bone, as if metal rods had suddenly replaced his bones. His skin was so numb from just touching the water that he felt like he would freeze to death. He floated down the river, and he popped his head up just in time to look back and see the creature keeping pace and looking at him. And then, the river forked. The man kicked away as best he could, trying to fight against the, wa the rushing water. He moved into the left fork, and the creature stopped, its hooves kicking into the air as it screamed, horrible screams that would never leave his nightmares. And the man, wait, jungle, no! No, jungle! I'm going to pause again, I can't finish this without jungle. Jungle, you're back! Hooray! So, as I was saying... Kicked into the left side of the river. So cold was it that he could feel everything to the bone. This man watched as the creature kicked its hooves into the air. It growled, snarled, and screamed at him. And he watched as it looked. It watched him as he floated away. His body so tired he could barely fight against the water. And he slowly began to sink. The creature blinked these bright, fiery orbs. Its eyes blinked turned around, and slowly went back into the woods. And that's all he remembered. The next morning, he woke up. At least he believed it was the next morning. He woke up in the field with the farmer and told him his story. And he warned him, there is something out there. I don't know if it comes for all men, but I know it comes for me. And as the sun slowly started to set, the man took a look at his glass and he drank a small sip. And the farmer, believing he had made it all up, heard a noise in the distance. Howls. He looked out the window and saw four orbs, two high up in the trees and another two at the base, watching. And he was overcome with terror. He survived to tell the tale. But, unfortunately, we don't really know what happened to the drowned man. The farmer never really concluded that bit of his story, but that's what's been passed down all the way to me. And that's the story of a knuckle eve. Thank you for listening. It's good. Thank you. I'm sorry. Don't shoot me. I'm innocent. I, I hope that was good, Jungle. I hope that was good. Thank you, I'm so glad. I'm always glad when I can make someone happy with that. Hey there, and thanks for watching. I really'd appreciate it if you could like the video and maybe even subscribe if you enjoyed yourself. This whole thing is kind of part of a new project I want to do with the channel where I go throughout VRChat telling stories and maybe even collecting a few. 
the world is a bit of a hectic place right now, so I'm hoping maybe by sharing stories and everything, we can all laugh and maybe get a sense of wonder through everything. Stories have kept people entertained for generations, and I just want to share a couple of them and maybe even create a few new ones. If you've enjoyed the video, I'm really glad, and if you have any feedback, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'm always looking to improve because I know I'm not perfect at this. For those of you that want to join and see these stories live, I am going to be getting on VR chat every Friday from 2 p.m. CST to 5 p.m. CST. In order to tell stories, collect them, might go a little longer, maybe a little less, it depends entirely what happens. But in the future, I might also try to stream this. We'll see what happens because I really want to try to work with a larger audience and really just kind of make everybody laugh and have a good time. So thanks again for watching this vid. I hope you had a wonderful time. Bye bye